So what I wanted to show, I have a 15 buck Arfid reader here, uh, this is uh, nothing very special, um, and I brought across my son's passport, this is a British passport, uh, which is biometrically equipped, so we already have issued around five and a half, seven million of these, um, the, the horse has bolted, the, the door's been opened and, and now everyone who is getting a new passport has this Arfid capable chip. If you look on the uh, screen here, this window here, will show you, as I place the uh, passport on the reader, all of Thomas's information. For a UK passport, that's his photograph, it's his place of birth, his mother's maiden name, his date of birth, his postcode of last residence, if he had a criminal record, God forbid, his fingerprints. There is more information coming out there than I would want about my son to be known to someone who is not authorized to have that information. So if I just take the card off, it'll stop reading. And as I demonstrated when we were in the middle of the conference, if I put that back in my wallet, how many times do people get so close to you to do that? Quite regularly on my flight here from, uh, from the UK. If I just clear this, what I'll do is I'll show that this card, which is also an RFID enabled card, isn't working. There's nothing happening until I apply gentle pressure to activate the switch and the card will read. This means that I now have control over whether the data is going to be read. And that's a first. So now, RFID devices, we can re-empower the holder of these. The danger with things like EDL, utilizing Gen 2, they can be read from 130 feet away. That is a stunning technology where you have a warehouse full of pallets and you want to know where pallet number 7398 is. It's a terrible technology when you want to identify who you are and what you're doing because the problem is I can identify lots of people in a large radius.